Hello friends, today in this session we will discuss compaction of subgrade soil. Basically proctor test. How do we estimate the optimum moisture content and maximum dry density of a soil to be used during field compaction? Soil compaction is an important phenomena in highway construction. Compaction of earth embankment results in reduction in future settlement. Compacted soil fill and subgrade improve the load supporting ability of the pavement which in turn results in decreased pavement thickness requirement. The laboratory compaction test results are useful in specifying the optimum moisture content at which a soil should be compacted and the dry density that should be aimed at construction site. There are two types of compaction test. One is light compaction test which is also called standard proctor test and it is given in IS 2720 part 7 and another is modified proctor test or heavy compaction test which is given in part 8. Light compaction test generally adopted for low volume roads and heavy compaction test for heavy volume roads or you can say national highway, state highway, even MDR also and on expressways. In case of standard proctor test, the soil is compacted by a 2.6 kg rammer falling from a height of 310 mm into a soil filled mold. The mold is filled with three layers of soil and each layer is subjected to 25 blows of the rammer. The modified proctor test is identical to the standard proctor test except that it employs 4.89 kg rammer falling at a distance of 450 mm and uses five layers of soil instead of three. So a compacting effort is much more than in case of a standard proctor test. The apparatus, you need this mold and that is the base plate, a standard mold or modified mold and a detachable collar. And the important dimension of this is that capacity of the cylinder is 1000 centimeter cube in case of light compaction and 2250 centimeter cube in case of heavy compaction. Internal diameter. 100 or 150 height of the mold remains same that is 127.3 millimeter weight of the hammer will change with the light or heavy compaction and also free drop of the rammer 310 millimeter in case of light compaction and 450 millimeter in case of heavy compaction these are the accessories which are required a base plate here and this with this base plate you have a mold that is the collar, a tray for mixing of the soil, a spatula and these are two hammers or rammers. This is for light compaction and that is for heavy compaction. You need a beaker for water and a small beaker to measure a small quantity of water when you add with the soil. A straight edge, maybe a steel scale just to trim the top surface of the soil and a weighing machine. So with that apparatus, you carry out the proctor test. The sample, the soil sample to be tested must be oven dried and weight of the dry sample for one trial of the test. In case of 1000 ml mold, you need 2.5 to 2.8 kg of soil and in case of modified mold, 2250 ml mold, you need 6.3 to 7 kg of soil depending upon the type of compaction for light compaction and heavy compaction. About 6 kg of dry soil material passing 19 millimeter ISC is taken. This test is not applicable for the particle which are larger than 19 millimeter. Aggregation of particles should be broken down so that when sieved on a 4.75 millimeter ISC, only separated individual particles would be retained. And the fraction retained on 90 mm sieve is not used. The passing 90 mm and retained 4.75 mm sieve is noted. And if this fraction is less than 20%, the sample is used as such without any alteration. But 
if passing 19 mm C when retained on 4.75 mm C is more than 20%, then actual proportion is maintained in all the test. Now here I will again repeat that the fraction retained on 19 mm C is not used in proctor test. In case the soil sample passes 4.75 mm ISC, which is normally the case with all types of soils, then the dry pulverized sample is sieved through 4.75 mm sieve and the portion passing this sieve is only taken for in the description box. Test procedure is like this. The first you take the weight of the mold with base plate attached to it to the accuracy of 1 gram. Then take appropriate sample of soil and add suitable amount of water for the first trial. And this starting moisture content can be 4 to 6 percent for sandy and gravelly soil and 8 to 10 percent below the plastic limit for cohesive soils. Then mix it properly so that the color of the mixture is uniform. Then divide this soil into 3 or 5 equal parts depending upon the type of test being conducted either light compaction or heavy compaction. Attach the collar to the mold and place the first part of the soil into the mold. Compact it uniformly and equally distribute it. And after compaction, scratch the, pro the previous layer of compacted soil by straight edge and then put another layer. After the final layer is compacted, loosen the collar to break the bond between the soil and remove it. Trim off the extra soil and make it flush with the top of the mold. Remove all loose soil from the outside of the base plate and then take the, take the weight of the sample including the base plate. Now take the sample of the soil from middle part of the mold and keep it in the oven for determination of moisture content. After this first trial, polarize the soil in the mixing tray and mix it by adding some more water to it. And the amount of water which should be added is 2% for sandy soil and 3 to 4% for cohesive soils. Now repeat all the steps until a decrease in weight of the soil and mold is observed in at least two successive observations. Now let us say weight of the empty mold is W1, weight of the mold plus compacted soil is W2, then the weight of compacted soil in the mold will be W2 minus W1 and let the volume of the mold is Vm, then you can determine the wet density of the compacted soil. W upon Vm, weight of the soil in the mold divided by volume of the mold. And if W is the moisture content, then the dry density will be wet density upon 1 plus W upon 100. Now you make a table of moisture content and dry density. And then make a plot between this, these two parameters, that is moisture content taken on x-axis and dry density taken on y-axis and this type of compaction curve is plotted. Dry density in gram per centimeter cube or you can also take in kg per meter cube and moisture content in percent. And here, this is the maximum density you achieve. So you draw a line here and corresponding to this highest point, you draw a line on x-axis also. Now this is the optimum moisture content and this is the maximum dry density. That is specified for field construction. This test is not suitable for certain types of soils and they are called problematic soils. The first is when you have oversized fraction. Soils containing more than 30% oversized fraction and here oversized fraction means material retained on 19 mm sieve is considered to be problem. For such soils, there is no ASTM test method to control their compaction. Although test methods are prescribed, 
in HTM D4914 and D5030 to determine the field dry unit weight of such soils, but they are difficult and very expensive to perform. One method to design and control the compaction of such soils is to use a test fill to determine the required degree of compaction and the method to obtain that compaction. Then use a method specification to control the compaction in field. The co components of a method specified typically contain the type and size of compaction equipment to be used, the lift thickness, acceptable range of modeling water content, and number of passes to be made to achieve the required density. Another method is to apply the use of density correction factor, which are developed by US Corps of Engineers. And these correction factors may be applied for soils containing up to about 50 to 70 percent of oversized fraction. The use of replacement technique, which generally is adopted, in which the oversized fraction is replaced with a finer fraction, is considered to be inappropriate to determine the maximum dry unit weight of soil containing oversized fractions. The second type of soil which is considered problematic is the soil which contains soft particles. The soil containing soft aggregates that get crushed during compaction are a problem, especially when more degradation occurs during laboratory compaction than field compaction and which is generally the typical case. When degradation occurs, the maximum dry unit weight increases so that the resulting laboratory maximum value is not representative of field conditions. Often in these cases, the maximum dry unit weight is impossible to achieve in the field. Again, for soil subject to degradation, the use of test fills and methods specifications may help, but use of replacement technique is not correct. And the third is gap graded soil. Gap graded soils means soils containing many large particles with limited small particles are a problem because the compacted soil will have larger wires than usual. And to handle these large wires, standard test methods typically have to be modified using engineering judgment. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you understood. You can write a suggestion in the comment box.